Hello there, procedurally generated people. I recently had to send my PC off for reasons and decided I would use the month I have of Nexus Premium on Daggerfall mods. This is going to be a combination review and setup guide for mods, Daggerfall Unity, and character creation. Maybe a little retrospective. First, my history with this series. I started off with Morrowind in college. Uh, winter break 2003, I was floored by the alien monsters and the deep impressive lore. I had no problem with the gameplay either. In that day and age, straight off the 90s, you really counted your blessings. Your weapon's not hitting the stuff that you're hitting? No problem. The fact that the game worked at all was great. Of course, I modded the hell out of it after I'd done everything. Oblivion, I played on the Xbox, never really got a chance to mod it. It didn't really grab me like Morrowind, though I appreciated it. I liked the zany characters and the fact that everything was voice acted. They really leaned into the silliness, especially with the Shivering Isles DLC. And of course, Patrick Stewart. Find him and close shut the jaws of oblivion for the five minutes that he's alive <sighs> i never modded it and what you all probably know me for skyrim i bought it when the dlcs were out in 2012 took a four-day week and played the hell out of it and then put it down for 10 years then i started playing it again in 2021 haven't really stopped modding it since which is what brought me to daggerfall a couple of years ago before i started making youtube videos about my characters but when they absolutely existed, I took Damien on a time travel ride to Skygerfall, which fairly faithfully recreates Daggerfall's main quest in Skyrim, but not much else. Also, this got an add-on mod recently, and I was considering playing it again when I get up to that point in the story, or the alternative, which I'm going to talk about today. I was testing the waters with this. But what's also very accurate about Skygerfall is that it's a gigantic flat plane with only specific cave entrances and castles and the fact that dungeons are all labyrinthine and, and kind of terrible. So I decided I would get a taste of the real thing. And by real, I mean, I tried out Daggerfall Unity. It takes the skeleton of Daggerfall and rips it out of the original engine and gets it to play in the Unity engine. What's best about this, aside from the fact that now your eyes won't bleed when you play it on a modern monitor, is you can use mods, and of course, I did. Even better, Daggerfall is completely free, as is Daggerfall Unity. Just go to the DFU GitHub, and they have a guide that tells you exactly how to install it. First of all, I wanna tell you about a setup that makes this game playable. Even before mods, you should cruise through the options. First, weapon swing mode. Put it in click, because, because in vanilla Daggerfall, you have to click and drag where you want your weapon to swing. Which seems kind of cool in theory, but in practice, it's like trying to operate your kitchen faucet with a pair of tongs. Click brings it to the level of the other TES games, spam attacks until your opponent dies. Of course, this actually becomes better than the later games because you can strike back out of the reach of the enemy. It actually gives you some strats in combat. And I mean, you've seen how I mod by Skyrim combat. Actually accurate weapon precision different moveset, dodging, etc. You can't really get any of that with Daggerfall, but you can make it a decent TES game. On the second screen, I would suggest smaller dungeons because in the base game, the dungeons are all procedurally generated. They're still procedurally generated. However, with less dice rolls, you have less of a chance of putting pieces of the dungeon in unreachable places, in space, underwater, just insane setups. Sometimes you'll find quest items where they're unreachable or I guess you won't find them. With this setting, it limits the size and complexity. So you won't spend eight hours in a dungeon only to find out it was behind a secret door underwater behind a group of creatures that you can't deal damage to. Only like 30 minutes. I would also suggest turning the music down. After several hours, it gets very annoying hearing the same tracks. Honestly, I need to look for a mod that just removes all the music. I mean, the music is great, especially with the new music, but it's so damn repetitive. Dungeon Access Wagon Prompt is a nice option for later, especially if you have the Realistic Wagon mod, which I do. On Enhancements, make sure Mod System, Asset Injection, and Compressed Modded Textures are on. Also turn the graphics all the way up. It's required for some mods, and I'm sure any mod or computer can handle it. Some of this should already be checked. You're just making sure. So for mods, I went with the Darker Fall Collection to start. 
This means I had to do it with Vortex, which is good or bad. It's a modern mod manager that does everything you need it to do. Especially with this game, it doesn't take very long. That's one of my main complaints with it with the Skyrim, it's just slow. The actual load order is dealt with inside the Daggerfall Unity engine, which will say, hey, this load order is bad. You want to auto sort? And you're like, sure. Boom, easy. Darkerfall adds a lot of stuff, including but not limited to, for graphics, dream, better skies, better textures, 3D animals. For gameplay, the ability to kick enemies off cliffs, distract them, throw dirt in their eye, poisons, crossbow. Oh, and your weapon always hits if it should. Daggerfall and Morrowind both have a D&D style combat roll system when you swing. I love D&D, but this was not really my favorite choice for an action RPG where you can see your damn sword pass through an enemy's body. Of course you know I prefer the precise gritty combat that Skyrim can be modded to, but this is a start. It makes movement and strategy and combat satisfying. Darker Fall adds great quality of life things like persistent dungeons they reset over time like Skyrim. It adds several new guilds, as if there wasn't enough to do in this game already, including the Bards, Red Lantern, Archaeologists. That's one place where Daggerfall shines already. I have a lot to say about this later. It makes magic generally better and allows your magic head the ability to restore over time. So you don't have to take an 8 hour nap every 5 minutes. Also it makes travel so so much better. In vanilla you can either trot along at horse slash foot speed in it, or instantly travel to a place. Daggerfall is freaking gigantic. With travel options, you can speed up to 20 times or more travel overland or just cruise along a road until you find something. I'll link to the collection author's showcase video, which is quite good. On top of Darker Fall though, I added about 30 more mods. Here are the highlights. Arena's Adventures, Skyrim's Raiding Quests, and Oblivion's style inspirational level up menu. Feels like I need something from Morrowind here to round things out. I also have even more quests like Forgotten Quest Pack, JF Quest Pack, Thieves Guild Jobs, Chronicle of the Great Knight, and Missives, which is also a mod for Skyrim. And a couple more guilds, Love and Lust, Prostitutes, since I guess I needed three prostitute organizations, Darker Falls Red Lantern is also one. And I guess there were some in the Thieves Guild in these mods too. So that's four. Added Power Struggle for some immersion. Finding other adventures in the wild fighting monsters is pretty cool. And though it's supposed to add different factions fighting battles i haven't seen that yet it's mostly adventures and monsters or adventures just hanging out and with the speech overhaul mod i can just try and recruit them to my party otherwise they just don't talk though and instant weapon swapping so i can play the archer melee hybrid i sometimes enjoy and then a few more quality of life things like repair tools a shield widget i didn't use because i can't shield bash skull dudgery which enhances thief skills Realistic wagons, which let you name your horse and dismount the horse and wagon like real objects in the world. Uh, that might have come from Darker Fall, actually. This actually might be the opposite of quality of life, since I lost my wagon more than once. Immersion and realism. Yeah, that's what I'll call it. Okay, so with all that modding done, I was ready to finally create a character. I mean, that's the joke for Skyrim, is that the modding is actually the hobby and not playing Skyrim anymore. Because we've all seen all of Skyrim after... 13 years or whatever. So I'm going to shift a little bit into guide mode. I suggest making a custom class whatever race. Red Guards and Dark Elves are better at hitting things, but that's not really a problem with this mod setup. And Altmer are broken. I'll get to that in a minute. What's really cool about this character creation is that you get to add max XP per level and balance advantages and disadvantages in a way that changes your XP needed per level. It's kind of a second edition D&D kind of thing, but I don't think a video game ever did this besides Daggerfall. This, like a lot of stuff in this game, is a cool concept and can either make this game incredibly hard or make you incredibly broken when you make an Ultra Giga Chad. Now, it was worse than the original game. In the original game, you could make some busted combos, especially with Ultimer, who somehow got complete immunity to magic, which also applied after everything else. So you could give him critical weakness to every single type of magic, and then their immunity overwrites that. In this version of the game, Daggerfall Unity, they still get resistance, which is still a boon, but the resistance and weakness balance each other out. Of course, I didn't pick Altmer because, what can I say, they become the Thalmor in just a few short years. I never really did like the Altmer, although it would make sense if the canon choice was Altmer. Even with Daggerfall Unity though, you can create a pretty broken character. 
All you need to do is balance drawbacks that don't affect your gameplay with advantages that make you more powerful. And you might think this is a bad idea, making the game easier, making the game really easy, but there are a lot of places where you will die horribly and wish you had done that. Hey, I'm a super strong adventurer. Here's this little spider. Oh, I'm gonna paralyze you. Oh, you think you're gonna get better? Oh, I'm gonna paralyze you again. Oh, you're dead. The world of Daggerfall is harsh and unforgiving. You want every advantage you can get. You know, your mileage may vary. You might want to actually intentionally make it harder once you've beaten the game a couple times. Anyway, here's how you add a little cheese to this mix. Subtract from agility and will and add to strength, intelligence, and speed in whatever combo you want. These have the least and most impact in gameplay per attribute point confirmed by testing. The skills that actually make you level up are all your primary skills, the top two major skills, and the top minor skill. These are the things that you'll be using a lot and will level you up fast, especially if you pick things that get used all the time. So you can tailor your loadout here to your playstyle or the playstyle you want to play. And this isn't like Skyrim where there's one stupidly broken combo, Stealth Archer, and it's not like Oblivion where you'll outlevel your skills and paradoxically be weaker as you get higher level. You'll get much better loot drops and become way stronger as you level. So if you can survive the first few levels, you'll be all right. Primary skills. I would suggest picking a weapon type. Longblade has the best weapons. A magic type, either destruction or restoration, and a movement skill. Jumping, running, sneaking, or dodging, because you're always using it. Sneaking is a great choice because the game constantly checks for sneaking, even if you aren't sneaking at the time. You might be tempted to pick Critical Strike, which in the vanilla game affects your die roll to hit, but with the mod Uncanny's Always Hit from Darker Fall, which I talk about extensively, it just makes all your swings that should hit do hit. I got no clue what Critical Strike actually does. I mean, mine still levels up, so it's doing something. I mean, I think that if you should miss, you just get like a glancing blow that does really reduce damage. Doesn't say anything about it on the mod page though, so I'm gonna put it pretty low on my priority list. For major skills, I would suggest picking sneaking if you didn't, then destruction or restoration, based on whichever you pick for primary. Pick whatever you like for the third, if you want to go with archery, pick it over destruction, but you might want to put Destro in the third slot so you still have it. There are a lot of monsters early on that only take damage from specific weapon types or magic, so you at least want to have basic magic abilities. For minor skills, pick Mysticism as your top one, though you might pick Alteration as an alternate choice. Reason being, you definitely need Mark and Recall. And as before mentioned, Daggerfall's dungeons are incredibly unforgiving and they don't have loot packs like Skyrim. Random note, I actually think they were justified in merging Thaumaturgy and Mysticism into Alteration. I mean, all three of them do the same damn thing. They didn't have to remove all the capabilities of them though. Like this game has Levitate, Teleportation, and lots of other stuff. The rest of these picks should just be based on your playstyle. For advantages, expertise in whatever weapon you chose. Makes it deal more damage with Always Hit. Without Always Hit, gives you a better chance to hit. Three times int spell points so you can cast spells. General spell absorption. And for context, that just means that whenever you take damage from spells, you gain MP. For disadvantages, critical weakness to paralysis and disease. This might it sound insane based on the stuff I already said. And it's a little bit risky, but Privateer's Hold will probably be okay for you. We're gonna do something to mitigate this early on, right after Privateer's Hold. And now restrict yourself to a few materials. Steel is no better than iron. Although I did find a lot of steel in the early game. Elven appears at the same time as, and as strong as, Dwarven. I'm told Adamantine is the same as Daedric and Ebony, appears at the same time as them, and is also extremely rare, even at the end of the game. Raise your possible HP per level to 30. And one more swing choice. This might vary depending on what you picked before. It gives different weight to restricting different things in this game. The goal here is you want the little dagger on the right on the bottom red line so that it takes 30% of the normal XP to level up because no matter what, as you level up, you get stronger. You can add critical weakness to shock since not a lot of enemies use shock, restrict orc armor, or weapon type that wasn't your expertise choice. Axe is a good choice here. Or restrict a type of shields, which doesn't have a high weight, but I don't use shields. Because you can't use the kick or blind ability with a shield and you can't shield bash in this game. Even though you can do all those things holding an offhand weapon, makes no sense to me. Of course it's possible to build a character different than this and still have a good time. I mean, if it is possible to have a good time in this game at all. Optimally, keep rolling until you get 464 to 474 between your stats and bonus points. Or until you get tired of it. 
With that, finally, the game begins. You get to watch not Patrick Stewart talk about... Wait. And close the marble jaws of oblivion. Pow! He didn't even need to say that. I'm not even sure why he did. If it's way better in Oblivion, do you imagine Ariel the Seventh just saying things like this in regular conversation? Like, please, Palace Butler, get me a slice of cherry pie and close the marble jaws of Oblivion to my hunger. I know that was a bad Patrick Stewart, whatever. Anyway, he sent you on a quest to figure out King Lysandus' murder and, oh, something about a letter. I have one lesser request. How about that little fella? How about that little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Anyway, I would suggest messing with the controls. I changed them to more what I would call Skyrim-esque, or at least modern. R for draw and sheath, Z to cast a spell, etc, etc. You'll run into the imp. Wait, what the fuck? Did the bat kill the imp? And uh, use magic on him. We fight a few baddies, and then make our way out to the wider world. First thing we should do is find a mage's guild and a bank. Preferably a town with both and preferably not a town you ever plan on going back to. But you do have a year to pay it back. And I don't think the main quest will wait for you for a year to finish it in vanilla. I do have a mod that puts no time limit on the main quest though. Take out a 10,000 gold loan, or at least 4,000. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, your credit's not good enough. My word, your credit score is only 200. Man who just started existing five minutes ago. Go to the nearest shop and buy a horse and carriage. I mean, one that has one. They don't all have them. I named my horse Excelsior. Then to the Mages Guild. Create a cheap cure disease, a cheap heal, and a cheap free action that lasts one second. Instead of having a chance to cure your paralysis, this makes you immune to paralysis for one second and costs next to nothing. Since you're now very susceptible to paralysis, you'll want to have the spell on a hotkey or something. And... Being paralyzed doesn't stop you from casting the spell, so uh, you're welcome. After that, you're basically free to roam the countryside, fight monsters, get treasure, join guilds, etc. Do adventure stuff. Like I said before, with Darkerfall, you have no rush main quest, which means the main quest will wait for you. Which is just how I like it. Immersive? Who cares? In my current Skyrim game, the only one I've activated the main quest, I waited seven in-game years to talk to Delphine after the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. She was just standing outside for seven years. Is that immersive? No. But do I hate Delphine? Yes. How dare you suggest that I kill Parthenax, my best dragon bro. But mind you, that's only because I don't like being forced to be the destined hero. I do like that most quests have time limits. I mean, that adds such a level of realism to Daggerfall quests, and in Skyrim, the missive board does that too. You know that assassin you're supposed to protect a noble from? Somebody else is going to take that job if you don't do it. That thing you're supposed to steal? That merchant will move it to a secure location in five days and it will never be findable again. I love that realism. But since they're not the main quest, I feel like I can fail a few, get people mad at me, you know, pick up a whole bunch of quests and just kind of wander off and forget to do them. And still, the world keeps turning. I don't create a doomed world by just ignoring what random people tell me. There's also a main quest enhanced, which... Adds the canon ending, which is, you know, all the endings happening, and gives you more paths forward. Even the ability to side with Lyth Sandus' killers, which is crazy for an evil playthrough. That sounds like a lot of fun. I haven't tried it yet. Alternatively, for a second playthrough, dynamically progressing main quest means some other guy can be the agent and you can go about your adventures. Something about that makes me happy. Maximum immersion for me is just being some guy, not the guy. I guess simulation at its finest, which Daggerfall is a simulation game. With all that being said, I do want to offer my thoughts on this game. After playing the main quest and the Thieves' Guild quest and a lot of random stuff, I kind of hate it. But then again, there's a lot of positive here. I did play it for a lot of hours. And I did create several characters, alternate characters to try out different builds. And I just kept downloading mods even after I had the script for this video like playable orcs. They're not normally playable until Morrowind because they were beasts in this time period and the warp in the west changed all that. You want to know why I hate it though? This game is incredibly tedious and unforgiving. A lot of the quests are just go here, collect this thing, come back, you have three days, get gold. You traverse a thousand miles of open wilderness to grab something from somebody's house 
and by open I do mean open, and the vanilla game is just flat plain with random trees. At least with mods there are some hills and stuff. There's so much verticality to modern, modern games, I think I've been spoiled. Even Skyrim. I don't know if I'd call that a modern game, but it's more modern than this. And on your thousand mile journey, maybe nothing happens. Maybe an assassin attacks you in the person's house, and they're like, Oh, okay. And don't say anything about it. Maybe it'll send you to a dungeon a thousand miles away, and the quest item is in the entryway. And maybe it's in an underwater secret passage behind two locked doors and three werewolves, and you don't have silver weapons. Or maybe it's in a part of the dungeon that's inaccessible without console commands. Maybe when I'm trying to find a bank, I'll ask 15 different people, only to have them all tell me to fuck off. And the towns are so unnecessarily large, it takes half an hour to find anything. At least with the uh, mods, you can remember where stuff is because it labels things as you find it. And it's actually got a pretty good graphical interface for the map. I can't imagine playing this in the 90s. I mean, I guess the thing about old games is it was like, that was all we had. We didn't have a thousand games available to us. Just look at my Steam library. And my Epic Games library of 100%. I've never played any of these games, but I get the weekly free Epic game game. Now I know what you might be saying about my these towns are too big complaint. I have the opposite complaint about Skyrim, the towns are too small. I would rather have it Daggerfall style but with a map filled in with what is actually there. I know some people would complain about this, there's no way you would know what these houses are. But I play video games not to have to worry about finding the bank, not to make sure I'm carrying the proper tool to do the job. Which is, you know, weapon materials. Which is something they didn't really do beyond 3rd edition D&D. While I'm on my ramble, a lot of really old games took a lot of stuff from old D&D edition. D&D is great, but it's come a long way. I know you saved the world and everything, but now it's time to balance the checkbook and wash the dishes. And make sure you don't have any diseases before going out or you could die and lose 5 hours of gameplay. Because you have no idea when you got the disease. And also I hate being stonewalled by st stupid requirements. I see that all the time in real life. And I hate inventory management, as you might know. Which in this game is mitigated a little bit by a wagon. And accessing the wagon from the exit of a dungeon is a nice add-on. They come standard with Daggerfall Unity. Yeah, so can you tell this game annoyed me a little bit? But still, once I understood the game's systems, I actually had some fun. Mind you, a lot of the guild quests are annoying. The Thieves Guild isn't what I expected, because you go and steal things, that's the obvious part. But if you're on a job and you kill someone, even in self-defense, even if they attack you for unrelated reasons, you're blacklisted and ejected from the guild immediately. So what did I like anyway? Well, obviously I love TES lore and a lot of it came from this game. The entire like ending sequence is crazy. And the fact that Daggerfall is all like a bunch of different kingdoms and families plotting against each other. To be brief, you find an ability to reactivate the Numidium, which is a giant Twimmer robot. And every kingdom wants you to give this to them so they can decimate all their opponents. Who gets it? Daggerfall, Wayrest, the Empire, the orcs, who deserve their own land. The Underking, which is where the totem actually came from. The King of Worms, a lich who would use it to become a god. The real answer is, everybody gets it. And anybody who knows the lore of the Elder Scrolls knows about Dragon Breaks. This is because every time somebody uses the Heart of Lorcan or the Numidium, which is powered by the Heart of Lorcan, weird retcon style things happen. Like when Tiber Septim conquered the rest of the continent, he used the Numidium, and a lot of people give a lot of different stories about what happened. In this case, it's a lot of different things happening at the same time, from different perspectives, and at the end, all of those things actually happened. So it ends up with all the kingdoms getting their own power consolidated, all the petty kingdoms get swallowed up by the big ones, and the orcs do get their own land. Manamarco, the King of Worms, does get his godhood. The Under King does get to die. And the agent fades away into history. A lot of the lore from this and Morrowind is just bonkers. And I love it. I do like also that with mods, combat becomes actually pretty fun. 
It's not as good as soul style combat, but it's, it's an entirely different thing that I also enjoy. And honestly, the hugeness, while it's a lot, it's a gigantic sandbox for you to play in. There's so much to do, so many quests, some of them the same, but I would say, give it an honest try. And with that, I guess I'm gonna get out of here. Time to work on another Skyrim video that's essentially high concept art that nobody will watch. Hello, you've reached the house of unrecognized talent. Please start after that. So long. Thanks for watching. Happy modding.